Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's flute tip is on getting spin on your third octave notes. How many of you feel like your third octave just doesn't have the same kind of resonance and um, excitement that perhaps your second, your second octave and your first octave do? I think that's a lot of us. We all need to work harder at our third octave, but there are some issues with working up there. Number one, if you do it too long, you can get really too tight in here. So we don't recommend working on your third octave for a, a long space of time because you don't want to get in the habit of getting tight. And while I'm always pretty loose and I don't normally have any trouble with being tight in my third octave, I've had some pieces where um, just the, the tessitura is up there in the third octave and I need to work out some fingering or technical issues. And uh, the longer I've worked, if it's been over a while, I don't know, 20 minutes up there, I started to get tight and I could feel that. And if that's you, then just stop what you're doing, do something else and come back, do some low work to loosen yourself up and then you'll be ready to work up there again. So I would say take it, you know, you'll have to find out where that uh, you know, how that time frame is for you and then, you know, move from there and work with that in mind. Okay. Now, the other thing is uh, when you work in your third octave that you have to be aware of is that you can have, you know, damage to your ears. So, um, you want to use ear protection. There are those drugstore kind that are a little foam, uh, things and you put them in your ear and they work. I, I think I'm not an audiologist, but you know, people use them and I have used them for Piccolo. Right now I have the ones that I got at a flu convention with, there was an actual hearing audiologist there that made them and fit them to me. So they, uh, I hear better with these, uh, specialized ones, but it still filters out the higher resonance. So I can hear what's going on. Oh, higher harmonics. That's the word I meant to use. I can hear what's going on, but it's not going to damage if I'm playing up there. So be careful about that and make sure you're using ear protection. All right. So what do you do in that third octave? Well, one of the big things is almost all the time is our embouchure is too tight. And yes, I said that already. Don't play with a tight embouchure. But if you're starting with a tight embouchure because you haven't learned how to loosen it up, that's the first thing you need to do. Start with a much looser embouchure. Yes, it's much tighter than if I'm playing in my first octave. Going down to a low C, it's really loose here. And going up into that third octave, yes, it's got to be firm. And I like to use the word firm, not tight, because tight connotes well, something not good. And firm just means I have a firm foundation on what's happening up here. So it is. But you know what? If when I'm teaching my students, I never talk about being firm there because I think you're automatically going to do what's necessary to at least get the note to come out. So it's keeping this loose here. And sometimes you need to learn that, or my students do, that you can get your high notes to come out without having to be tight. So I've, uh, I like to use what I call the stomach punch. And when you do the stomach punch, if you got really punched in the stomach and all your air came out really fast, came out in one, and your stomach came in, all right, you can do that with a high note with a very loose embouchure. And I'll show you. So I'm going to do that on a high G because I want to see that I can get a high note out with not making this be really tight. So I'm just going to punch my stomach and I feel very loose here. Very loose. I think you can see that. I have to have a little bit. If I was just flabby lips, you know, I wouldn't have something. So I have to have a loosely made embouchure and if I like the sound that's coming out, I'm going to hold it. And then I know that I can get that note to come out without having to be really tight. Now, once I've got that loosened up embouchure, the next thing is to make sure you have support. And I'm not going to go into support. I've got plenty of videos out there about support, but you have to make sure that your muscles are tight and they're pushing up on that high note. When you do that, that gives you the liberty to loosen up here. 
So if I have really tight support down here, not tight here, but down in my stomach region, then I can even add a little bit of air, which I just did because it helps with intonation, to put a little air in my cheeks and I can make that be a nicer, rounder sound. Now, when we are talking about that third octave, we like to talk about it with spin. I can put vibrato on. But what I really want to think about is up there in that register to have more spin. Sopranos talk about having spin on their high notes because they are so high, we need to have that movement or else the sound is really harsh. So I'm going to start off with a really short tone and I'm just going to jiggle it dee, dee, and really just move my voice box. And move the vibrato faster, which sopranos then they call that spin. You don't want to call it vibrato up there for whatever reason, but I like that term because when I think of vibrato, I usually think of it something a little bit slower. If I'm doing a really short note, I can have that spin. If I'm going to hold it, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit less as less fast, I guess is what I want to say, but it's still what I would call a spin. Really tight. Each one of those notes I'm pushing with my stomach. So my stomach went tight, relax, tight, relax, tight, relax to help me push up there and keep this open. Now, to keep get spin on that third octave note, I also want to be really big inside. It doesn't matter the size of my opening, but inside needs to be a cavern. So I want that air to still go be echo behind my sinus cavity. I want my tongue to be down, my soft palate up, so that that air just has a free space to come out without any constriction. If you think you're playing with a tight throat, you'll never get the spin you're looking for on that third octave note. The throat has to be open and big and uh, the airstream unobstructed as it comes out. Now, if you keep it so that it comes, uh, keep your uh, soft palate up and your tongue down when you're playing, that air gets to echo behind your sinus cavity as it's coming out giving you the resonance that you're looking for. So what you're thinking about when you want third octave spin is first start off with a loose embouchure, then make sure you have support. Then start off with doing those stomach punches just to see that I can get those notes to come out without having to be tight here. Make sure you have support so it's pushing up on your note, uh, on your high notes, right? Pushing up on those, that third octave. And then what you're trying to do is just jiggle that, that tone. Just, I like to call it spin, but it's really dee, dee. Really, I can't do it unless my stomach was tight. I'm pushing up and it's tight and it gives me that, that nice little spin on those notes and then have a cavern inside so that that tone up there can resonate and be nice and full. So experiment with that. You'll be happy that you did. You'll end up liking your third octave notes and don't forget to use that ear production. That's today's flute tip.